Uh, dear friends, uh, Mr. Uh, my, 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 my dear respected chairperson and my dear friends, I'm going to talk on a topic which is of very contemporary importance, genetics of type 1 diabetes. And uh, you know this, uh, currently I'm the Professor Emeritus at the Mahatma Gandhi Medical College Research Institute and the Balaji Vidyapit. And uh, you know, this presentation comes from the medicine department uh, of that particular institute. Uh, dear friends, I must uh, hasten toward that the work that I'm presenting just now is the work done at the Department of Molecular Endocrinology at Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden, which is going to host the ASD this year. And day after tomorrow, the ASD starts there. Uh, it was inducted in my good friend, Dr. Karini Sanjeevi, who is well known in our country. Uh, it was supported by a research, senior research fellowship awarded to me for one year in his lab. And uh, this all has found a place in a pediatric diabetes book edited by Sanjay Kalra and myself. And this chapter 29 is the one which talks about genetics of type 1 diabetes. And I will also take some data or speak some data from the, I chaired the Diabetes in the Young Registry for the government of India. I just give prior preliminary data, published data only, uh, and also two paper published by us in the proceedings of the National Academy of Medical Sciences, USA. Uh, one, the genetics data, or the vaccine data, and the BCG vaccine data, which is very revealing. Dear friends, Type 1 diabetes, uh, uh, but to one, one confession that I'll be a little fast and I'll only speak the things that are important. Type 1 diabetics is an immunogenetic disease. You must have the correct genetics and you must have the current autoantibodies to have the disease. So it has been called a geneticist nightmare, but currently it has been described that it's nobody nightmare. It is common in childhood and, and you know, it is characterized by the immune associated destruction of the insulin producing beta cells of the pancreas. It's a complex disease that three things play a role, genetics, epigenetics, and the environmental factors, which I'll show in a minute. It is rising today, and people have said minimum it is rising about 3% per year. So the number is increasing very steadily. And historically, it was thought to be a disease of the children, but it can be found in, in the adults at any age. But mostly, 87% of disease occurs in children from the data we have from the Young Diabetes Registry. Dear friend, all that is diabetes in childhood is not type 1. We have type 2 diabetes in the young children. We have so many other things which I will not go into detail like pancreatic diabetes, like malnutrition, modulated diabetes, not yet except as a separate class, but we have it in India. But no, no, about 63.9% from the latest diabetes in the young registry of government India are type 1. So all that I mean to say that type 1 diabetes is the most common problem in our country, according to our registry, in the in the in the diabetes in the in the young, and it's about 64 percent, 63.9, followed by today type two diabetes in the young children, young OB children is almost about 24 percent. Dear friends, I have given the epigenetic risk factors like histone, post translational, DNA methylation, and non coding RNAs. I have given the genetic risk factors, which I'll describe in little detail the predisposing factors, which are the like, like the type 1 diabetes in an affected twin, uh, one of the co-twins, and islet onto autoantibody positive family members, altered methylation, and altered expression of various mRNAs. What is most important, they do not occur unless we have the infection by the viruses, dietary factors like the bovine serum albumin from the, from the cow's milk. It has been postulated, not totally proved, Intestinal microbiota also plays a role and antibiotics also play a role. The pre disposing factors include environmental triggers for beta cell autoimmunity and various other factors which I will not go into details of it. This is very important. 40 loci of genetics are known to affect the disease susceptibility. They are the HLA, DQ alpha, HLA, DQ beta, HLA, DR, pre-pro-insulin gene and the PTPN22 gene. So this may appear a little, uh, little difficult for the people who are not involved in type 1 diabetes study. All that I mean to say, one must have the perfect genetic makeup of the HLA, DQ alpha, DQ beta, DQ HLA DR to have type 1 diabetes, even if they have autoimmunity. Now, if you come down from the Norway down to Japan, you will find the prevalence of type 1 diabetes comes down gradually. Japan, India, Japan being the lower end. Now, it is because of the fact the genetics also improves with protective genes. 
now beyond these genes there also interferon <coughs> interferon induced helicase which also plays a role <coughs> and few other genes also important now if the mother has type 1 diabetes the the children of type 1 diabetes positive mother have a 2% risk but if father has type 1 diabetes the children have almost 7% risk now this cartoon shows the beta cell autoimmunity it shows the various environmental factors which can occur in the genetically uh, susceptible children now they include uh, the 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 macrophage the dendritic cell but what is most important is the role played by the environmental factors like the various auto antibodies i'll describe in a minute beyond that the endoretroplasmic stress uh, viral infections etc also produce great deal of onslaught i'll come in a minute now this hl antigen locus is present in the short arm of the chromosome 6 now this is the basics beyond this there are so many other genes the concerned genes are class 1 HLA A B and C class 2 HLA DP HLA DQ HLA DR amongst these HLA A B and C DPA1 DP DPB1 and DQ A1 DQ B1 and DR B1 are highly polymorphic and they are responsible and this polymorphic genes play a role in the immune response now the high risk HLA class 2 genes represent the strongest genetic association almost 50% of the total genetic contribution to disease a 20 fold increase has been shown in the type 1 diabetics related relatives twins the family members those who have hla dr3 dq2 or dr4 and dq8 dear friends i must tell you that in india we have just started in the diabetes registry the work on the genetics which has just started so we'll be having data at the end of one year this data is the data which we have gathered from the uh, immunomolecular lab at the karolinska institute and these are all published data that this is important for the genetic study point of view now how this dr and dq genes produce type 1 diabetes they produce because of the peptide binding activity of the hla class 2 molecules and they face the antigen presenting cells producing t lymphocyte peptide recognition that is called cd4 plus t cells uh, not all drb positive 03 dq2 haplotype predispose equally to disease two conjugate haplotypes and one ancestral were associated with the diabetes susceptibility so uh, so it, it it suffices to mention that there are some genes which provide the susceptibility and some genes also provide the the protection like hla a24 is found to strongly associate with t1 diabetes mellitus with a very rapid destruction of beta cells whereas a03 allele is shown to have a protective role against type 1 diabetes in children with hla even they, if they have dr3 dr4 this a03 allele provides a great deal of protection now haplotype of the msc class 2 loci also confer strongest protection now you know in japanese it is protective like the drb1 1501 and dq6 there are few non human leukocyte antigen genes uh, beyond uh, they are also been tried to be correlated with the with the uh, genetics of type 1 diabetes now the, the what they do is that they they increase the cell autoimmunity it has been said and shown that it increases 16 fold autoimmunity in the family history of type 1 diabetes if there is hla dr3 4 or dqb1 and 302 genotype and the susceptibility varies with various types of genotype now it has been so also shown that in certain types of the non human leukocyte antigen genes the susceptibility can rise as far as 40 fold to make a long story short i must tell you that it is related to both hla genes and non hla genes and therefore it is up to the gen genetic structure that we have we can have the disease but one cannot have the disease unless there is autoimmunity there is also related to insulin gene insulin is a major 
cell autoantigen to type 1 diabetes mellitus located in the 11P15.5. And this codes for the pre pro insulin. This is pre pro insulin converted to pro insulin, which is further, con further converted to insulin. The INS gene is transcribed and translated in the thymus. It has been shown that the INS promoter region, which has IDDM2 loci, also plays a role to the VNTR, the variable number of tandem rest repeats. I don't know details of it, not necessary for this talk today. Now, it has been also shown that even though one has this type of genetic, genetic predisposition, one must have autoantibodies. The autoantibodies that are important are the ICA, 512, insulinoma antigen 2 autoantibodies, and GAD 65, Imogen 38, and the HSP, heat shock protein. So these autoantibodies have been all worked out in various parts of the globe, including in our lab in the in the Stockholm. Now, beta cell specific autoantibodies that has been discovered not new about 10 years back are the zinc transporter 8, which has been also extensively studied in our country and has been found to be correlated to the autoimmunity in type 1 diabetes. And there are other things like IAP, islet amyloid polypeptide, and the chromogranin has been also correlated. Now, if there, the number of autoantibodies present and the higher the titer can be considered as independent predictors of type 1 diabetes. If somebody has IA2 and GAD antibody, is more susceptible than having only IA2 and the quantum of the antibody. Now, insulin autoantibodies are highly specific and sensitive, but they need a large volume of serum to find out these auto autoantibodies. Therefore, it is not routinely done. Whereas the GAD autoantibody is found in about 70% of the newly onset type 1 diabetes. As the time passes beyond five years, it has been shown to be less than 10%. Now, there are a like, lot of epigenetic phenomena like deoxyribonucleic acid, methylation, histone demodification, which also play a role. What are the clinical implications of the genetic study? I'll, I'll just not go through the slide. I'll tell you that the risk group who can have the disease that we can predict. And as you heard Ram speaking about preventing type 2 diabetes with metformin, this type 1 diabetes, genetically susceptible people can be prevented. If you have the gene and if a family member has the autoantibody, one can look into the autoantibodies, it can be prevented. So it has been shown to prevent in the fast relatives of the type 1 diabetes, in the GDM mothers with autoantibody positivity and children who are born to older mothers who have a chance to develop type 1 diabetes than general population. Now the various studies which have shown the genetically induced or genetically related Prevention studies are the, uh, the D DPT-1 trial in the Finland, European Nicotinamide Diabetes Prevention Trial, NDIC trial, and, and, the, and the type 1 diabetes prediction prevention study called DIPP study, and Finnish Diabetes Association, and trial to reduce type 1 diabetes in genetically at risk children, that's called 3GR studies. So these are the studies, so the genetics provides the avenue for prevention. Last part of my study, do we have vaccine today to prevent type 1 diabetes? I, the answer is no. But the various vaccines that are undergoing trial uh, are divided into four types. The vaccine, we can provide induction of tolerance to the antigen so that uh, the, the disease will not occur, develop our, our peptide-based vaccine strategy. I'll describe one which was developed in the Stockholm lab, DPP27, deoxy ribonucleic acid vaccine and adjuvants of vaccine in which BCG stands out prominently. We presented the data in the New York Academy of Medical Sciences about the BCG vaccine. And we said that may be one of the factors with evidence we said can be one of the factors of less number of type 1 diabetics in India. I'll just come to a minute. Now, how do you induce tolerance? One of the methods used is to induce tolerance by administrating oral insulin conjugated to beta subunit of the cholera vaccine. So oral insulin conjugated to beta subunit of the cholera, cholera toxin 31, which can suppress systemic T cell reactivity. And cholera toxin B subunit carries the insulin to the intestine and helps, the trans, helps in the transfer of insulin molecule across the intestinal barrier. This helps in the reduction of the insulin doses administered orally without causing hypoglycemia. I told you about this vaccine developed in Sweden 
An immunomodulatory peptide vaccine called Diapep 277 has been passed phase 2 study by mechanism of glucagon mediated C peptide production. And this is called Diamid. It, it is commercially available today, Diamid GAD65 vaccine. It acts by preventing beta cell destruction. And the two vaccines used today in the, in the investigation to prevent type 1 diabetes. Therapeutically, it has not yet come to the market. Now, there are various uh, uh, deoxy ribonucleic acid vaccines uh, administered, uh, uh, administering the GAR65 gene in a plasmid vector intramuscularly. So, the GAR65 protein is produced in the body that can induce tolerance to type 1, to the, to the GAD uh, antigen and can produce, uh, uh, can produce the, some amount of immunity. BCG vaccine has been tried in the prevention of type 1 diabetes by shifting the T-cell response from destructive to non-destructive and has been rather successful. Uh, dear friends, to conclude, type 1 diabetes is a polygenic disease where we have multiple genes. At the same time, we must have autoimmunity and we must have the epigenetic factors in which the environmental factors like the virus triggers autoimmunity in genetically susceptible individual. So to, for, the, for the beginners, one must have genetic susceptibility, one must have the autoantibody and the viruses make this onto antibodies more auto-generated for the diabetes, thus leading to the cell apoptosis and hence insulin deficiency. Majority of the type 1 diabetes patients are test positive for autoantibodies, which destroy the cells of the pancreas. These autoantibodies develop under the influence of HLA and non-HLA genes and various epigenetic modifications. Amongst the non-HLA gene, insulin gene and PTPN22, have gene-environment interaction with the enterovirus and the cow's milk, the bovine serum albumin, is one of the issues being investigated today, whether they can produce diabetes. Last slide, various strategies have been used in patients with islet cell autoimmunity to prevent development of type 1 diabetes or occurrence of, if not total diabetes prevention, they don't gain to diabetic ketoacidosis by modifying the natural course of autoimmunity with less promising results. They do not totally prevent, but they can reduce the severity of type 1 diabetes in the susceptible children. Generating testing routinely is not clinically indicated in these patients, but in future may help to identify the siblings or the first relatives of type 2 type 1 diabetes mellitus cases with high risk HLA haplotypes. Therefore, the genetics helps in identifying the high risk haplotypes in whom one can consider the vaccines, one can consider developing immune tolerance or, can, or giving the drugs like cyclosporine and steroids. Both have been used. But I must hasten toward the results have been up to two years. As long as you give this cyclosporine or steroids, type 1 diabetes it stays under remission. But once the drug is stopped, one has to go back to the dose of insulin. It may be a little less dose required, but the disease comes back in a milder way. Thank you very much for a patient hearing.